They're trying to clear debris off the racetrack and the car brakes won't steer and he slides up the track and in to the back of that surplus helicopter jet engine on a trailer used to dry the racetrack. Uh, Mike, I saw sparks coming out from the car as if it had a tire down or something. What an incredible turn of events. I've never, I've never in my life. In NASCAR, most fans remember Juan Pablo Montoya for this embarrassing moment. This lone moment has painted over virtually any other moment that many NASCAR fans remember him for. And really, as a racing fan, it's kind of jarring to see the different points of views between NASCAR fans and other racing fans on Montoya. NASCAR fans see a driver who is an utter failure in the sport and was encapsulated in this explosive moment. Most overall motorsports fans, though, see Montoya as an immensely talented superstar that is one of the best drivers that the world has ever seen. So why is there such a difference? Montoya has driven just about everything. Any worldwide known series has been on the table for him. Formula One, IndyCar, Kart, IMSA, Grand Am, and of course, NASCAR. Looking at how he's done in other series, you can see why he has been held in such high regards with other racing fans. Starting off, we can look at his performance in Formula One from 2001 to 2006. He made 94 starts, he had 7 wins and 30 podium finishes. The 7 wins he earned ranks him tied for 38th on F1's all-time wins list out of 109 drivers to win. And he is the highest Colombian driver on that list. To do this in what is arguably the most challenging form of racing on earth should be shown just how good Montoya is. Sticking with open wheel racing, let's take a look at Montoya's track records in IndyCar and Kart. In Kart, he had 10 wins and 40 starts, and in IndyCar, he had 5 wins and 53 starts. On top of this, he had a combined 13 podium finishes in IndyCar and won the 2000 and 2015 runnings of the Indianapolis 500. He won the 1999 Kart Championship and finished as high as second in the 2015 IndyCar standings with a 6.9 average finish. But open wheel isn't the only form of racing that Montoya has had success in in his career. Montoya also won in sports car racing, scoring 6 wins across 30 races as well as 17 podium finishes in select races from 2007 to today. To say that Montoya is a versatile driver is a complete understatement. So to see him join NASCAR when the sport was at its peak popularity was something that would be absolutely rocking the racing world. And to put it bluntly, Montoya's first start was nearly as big of a story as the championship battle. His first start would be in the 2006 Ford 400 when there were five drivers fighting for the championship, including four who had never won a championship before, and also including NASCAR's most popular driver. So think of all of that, and Montoya being there still was nearly the top story of the weekend. With all this lead up, now I want to enter into the second part of this video, looking at Montoya's results in his full-time cup career. For this, we're gonna look at his best, worst, and middle running seasons as well as his equipment to compare. Montoya's worst statistical season would be his sophomore season in 2008. While he had more top fives and top tens in his 2012 campaign, he had no poles, he only led 14 laps, he had nine DNFs, and a 24th place average finish while finishing 25th in the points. Montoya's biggest problem in this season was not keeping himself out of trouble. Of his nine DNFs, eight of them were crashes. That contributed greatly to him finishing 30th or worse in 14 of the 36 races. Even with this, he was still the best Ganassi entry that season as Reed Sorensen finished 32nd in the points with a 24th place average and Dario Franchitti, who had a 34th place average finish with 10 starts. So while 2008 was bad for Montoya, he still was a top representative for Ganassi. As for his best season, well, it would take place directly after his worst, in 2009. Montoya would qualify for the chase for the Sprint Cup. He actually was a very real threat for the championship in the first half of the chase as well. He was third in points after four races and only 58 behind leader and eventual champion, Jimmy Johnson. 
Eventually, though, he would fade out of contention and finish eighth in the points. He had seven top fives, 18 top tens, and a 14.2 average finish, which was a career best. He drastically improved his DNF count as well from nine to zero, making for one of the biggest comebacks of the 2009 campaign. But judging someone by their floor and ceiling is not the best way to see how good they were in general. So to go more in depth, I'm going to be using the Colin Cowherd method of taking the best and worst seasons out and just looking at the rest. These seasons are 2007 as well as the seasons between 2010 and 2013. There were 180 starts that he had. He scored two wins, 15 top fives, 36 top tens, seven poles. He led 722 laps and he had 18 DNFs. This averages out for a season to have a win every other season or so, three top fives, seven top tens, maybe a pole, 140 laps led or so, and an average of 20th in points. His two wins came at both road courses that were on the schedule at the time. Sonoma in 2007 and Watkins Glen in 2010. In 2007, he won Rookie of the Year with his 20th place points finish. And in 2010, he had his win and a 17th place points run. In 2011, he regressed to 21st. And in 2012, he fell back again to 22nd. 2012 was also the first time in his career he failed to score a top five finish in a season. 2013 would mark Montoya's final season. And he would rebound a little bit with four top fives and eight top tens, while still floundering though in the points at 21st. In 2007, he was the best of the Ganassi squad, outperforming Reed Sorensen and David Stremme. From 2010 to 2013, he had one teammate in Jamie McMurray. McMurray outperformed Montoya with three wins and a 14th place points finish in 2010. Montoya, though, would eventually go ahead of him in 2011, as McMurray fell to 27th in points. But over the next two years, Montoya fell behind him once more. During this time, Ganassi was always a mid-pack team. The fact that Montoya performed as well as he did in 2009 was honestly impressive. The rest of his career between finishing 17th to 25th in the points was honestly about where he should have been with those cars. This wasn't the Ganassi of the late 2010s and early 2020s that we know of today, a top level team. He was outperforming teammates like David Stremme and Reed Sorensen, as well as even Martin Truex Jr. in 2009, yet was second fiddle to Jamie McMurray of all people. What does this all say? I think it shows that Montoya's overall talent carried him a lot when it could. 2009 and road course races showed this the most, but most of the time he ended up running where his equipment would let him. Basically, to answer the question, Juan Pablo Montoya is a serviceable NASCAR driver. Not horrible like some exclaim, but not even close to a perennial championship driver at all. NASCAR just wasn't his form of racing. NASCAR just wasn't his cup of tea. Not just... NASCAR just wasn't his cup of tea. It wasn't really his form of racing that he excelled in. It didn't fit his style much, as other series did more. With that being said now, I want to pass this on to you. How do you think Juan Pablo Montoya was in NASCAR? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. Also, be sure to catch me on two podcasts this Wednesday, May 20th. First, the Scene Vault podcast on all streaming platforms. It'll be in the morning. And also, the NASCAR Weekly podcast for a special pre-race show on Eric Eastep's channel. It's going to be pretty fun. And until all then, and until then, have a good one.